So the metastatic cascade, I'm sure we've heard a lot about it. It is often depicted as a linear process where you have a primary tumor that grows and needs to recruit vasculature to feed the tumor. It needs to um, then invade the tissue to get into vasculature, circulate through the blood vessels or the lymphatics, and somehow wind up inside of an organ. And despite the fact that you know, this is often depicted in very you know, big journals from big labs, um, I think two out of the three most important findings in the metastasis field in the last 10 or 15 years have been findings that have really turned this linearity of metastasis on its head. So I'll tell you a little bit about this um, finding about tumor cells and the fact that they can disseminate early. This is a finding that was made by Christoph Klein uh, about 10 uh, to 12 years ago. And the bottom line, what you really need to know is that in this mouse, it would take 26 weeks typically for a tumor to come up, so to be palpable. And so you would assume that if growth is necessary for dissemination, then you shouldn't really have dissemination until you can palpate that tumor. It turns out if you go and look in the bone marrow as early as week four, 22 weeks before a tumor is going to be palpable, you already have disseminated tumor cells in the bone marrow of the mouse. And so you'd say, okay, well, what does this have to do with patients? Well, it turns out if you look at patients with ductal carcinoma in situ, anywhere from 20 to 50% of women with DCIS have breast tumor cells in their bone marrow. This is supposedly in situ disease. So some of you might say, well, maybe they misdiagnosed the DCIS, and I'm sure in some of those cases that's what happened. But in other cases, they've gone back and looked very carefully at serial sections, and they don't see any evidence of invasion and you still find uh, cells in the bone marrow of those patients in 20% of those patients. So that really tells you the cells are getting out early. And now when you go and look in the bone marrow of patients with breast cancer, this is by and large what you find. You find single or very small clusters of cells in the bone marrow. One thing I would want to point out is that if this were lymphoma, then the, this finding of a tumor cell in the bone marrow would already be sufficient to characterize that patient as stage four. So in breast cancer, we don't do that. And there's, there's reasons we don't do that. I'm not saying it should be done. I'm just saying that, that, that there is um, this notion that when cells are in the bone marrow, this is indicative of maybe a disease that's worse than a disease that doesn't have cells in the bone marrow. So, th so this presence of cells in the bone marrow is, is a really high risk factor. And you'll see that the presence of metastases doesn't, you know, by and large, even if patients have them, that doesn't mean that they're going to relapse. That's a really important point. We have to figure out what are the cells that are indicative of relapse from those that are not indicative of relapse. And you also see that there's a small fraction of patients who don't have detectable cells in their bone marrow who relapse as well. So why is that? That's something else that we really need to figure out. But what we're really interested in now is what about the fact that these cells are resistant to therapy? This is a property that is often overlooked about these cells. And the reason it's overlooked is because people say, well, the cells are asleep. Why would they respond to rapidly, why would they respond to therapies that kill rapidly dividing cells? And the reason we wanted to challenge this notion is because you could imagine if it were wrong and that the cells aren't protected from therapy only because they're not dividing, but they're protected by the environment that they're in, then we could target that environment and perhaps find a way now to sensitize these cells to therapy, deplete the reservoir of cells in a patient's body and then prevent metastases from arising that way. And so the bottom line is this. When we look at bone marrow and we see this association of these dormant cells with the blood vessels, we want to prevent them from progressing into these micromets that then eventually progress to metastases. We looked on what was the out, on the outside of vasculature. We saw the presence of a lot of proteins that signal through receptors called integrants. And so we started profiling and, and inhibiting integrins one by one to see which one of these integrins we could inhibit to sensitize cells to chemotherapy. And we found two that we thought were really, really important. And the bottom line is when we inhibited both of them in culture, we went from killing 33% of these single dormant tumor cells with chemotherapy to killing over 90% of them with chemotherapy. So we go from therapy, um, combining integrin targeting therapy with chemotherapy, um, and we're able to kill now 93 to 94% of the cells in bone marrow. And then, like I said, the question is, does this actually result in prevention of metastasis? And the answer is that it does. This is when you just treat with chemotherapy alone. About 70% of the mice eventually succumb to metastases. When we combine integrin targeting therapy, um, in the best case scenario, only 22% of the mice succumb to metastases. So you go from 70% succumbing to bone metastases to 22% succumbing to metastases. So then the question is now, um, 
you know, are we going to be able to now take this result that is very promising in mice and, and translate this to patients? And that is something that we are actively now working on.